Polar Express, written and illustrated by Chris Ann Allsberg, read by the James S. YouTube channel. On Christmas Eve, many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend who told me I had never hear. The ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. There is no Santa, my friend insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did hear a sound, but not a ringing bells. From outside came the sounds of hissing steam and squeaky metal. I looked from my window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took a large pocket watch from his vest and looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs and out the door. All aboard, the conductor cried out. I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where, I asked. Why, to the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express took his outstretched hand, and he pulled me aboard. The train was filled with other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We all sang Christmas carols and ate candies with the milky centers of white as snow, drank hot cocoa and sick and rich as melted chocolate bar. From outside, we, from the lights in towns and villages, flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. Soon, there were no more lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forests, where lean wolves wool, right white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as we thundered through the quiet wilderness. We climbed mountains so high it's nearly we would scrape the moon, but the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along. We rolled through peaks through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. The mountains turned into hills. The snow was flat as the polar ice cap through a peak, through a colored plane. There, said the conductor, is the North Pole. The North Pole. A big city standing alone at the top of the world, where factories where every Christmas toy was made. But when we got there, we saw no else. They are gathering at the center of the city, the conductor told us. As for Santa will give the first gift of Christmas. Who receives the first gift? We all asked. The conductor said he will choose one of you. And then later, look, shouted one of the children. The elves. Outside we saw hundreds of millions of elves. Our train slowed to a crawl so partly with the seat of Santa's helpers. The Polar Express couldn't go no farther. We stopped. The conductor let us outside. We crouched to a large open circle. In front of us stood Santa's sleigh. There he was himself, Santa Claus. There were the ringing bells of his sleigh, and the elves cheered wildly. And then Santa marched over to us and pointed to me, saying, let's have this little fellow right here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor helped me up. I sat on Santa's lap, and he said, what would you like for Christmas? I said to him, I didn't want very much for Christmas. I just wish I could have anything more than this. I didn't want anything for Christmas. It was not inside Santa's giant bag. All I wanted for Christmas is one of the silver bells from your sleigh. Santa said, smiled, and he gave me a handshake. And then he told an elf to cut a bell from the reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to him, and he said, The first gift of Christmas! The elves cheered, and then Santa was just about to leave. The clock struck midnight. I put the uh, bell in my robe pocket, and then the conductor helped me down. And I thanked him, and then Santa's sleigh marched into the fly through the air, and then he yelled out the reindeer's names, and, he, and, he, and once again he disappeared in the deep, dark, polar sky.
As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, the children all asked me would they like to see the bell, and I did. I reached into my pocket. The only thing I discovered was a hole. I lost it. I lost the bell from Santa's sleigh, and I felt miserable. Let's hurry up and find it, one of the children asked, and then the train made a sudden lurch. The tr and it was too late. We were on our way home. For good. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood at my doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor said something from the moving train. I couldn't hear him. What? I yelled out. The conductor cuffed his hands around his mouth. Merry Christmas! He shouted. The Polar Express let out a loud blast from its whistle. <laughs> and sped away. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I opened our presents. It seemed that everything was unwrapped. But Sarah found a small box from behind the tree. It had my name on it. In, when I unwrapped it, it had it had a, the silver bell from Santa's sleigh. I looked at it, picked it up, and I rang it. It was the most gorgeous sound my sister and I had ever heard. Inside, there was also a note. Found this on the seat of my sleigh. Better fix that hole in your pocket. Signed, Mr. C. And that was very nice of him. And then my parents asked me what I got, and I told them it was the bell from Santa. That's too bad, said my mother. Yeah, said my father, it's broken. So I shook the bell, but my parents did not hear a thing. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell. And as years passed, it felt silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas, she could no longer hear a sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me, as it does for all. I truly believe. The end. Guys, thanks for tuning in to the James S. YouTube channel. I'll give you some more of my book rating, which I'll tell you later on. Merry Christmas.